Sean, today's video is all about practice. I mean, it, listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm giving away free swag every week to the best comment. But in order to win, you've got to be a subscriber. So click the subscribe button. Get a chance to win some really cool free swag handmade by Sean Webb. Seamstress. <laughs> so, Sean, we see this all the time. And actually, just give us an example of what we see practice like. You've got a beautiful <laughs> range here at 265. Okay. What's a typical golfer's practice look like? You ready? See if I can do it. Didn't like that one. Rake another one. Nah, that was better. Right, a lot of machine gunning. Right, those last two were actually impressive. <laughs> so that really doesn't do anything but get the heart rate up, I'm maybe exercising. burn some calories yeah. and exercise. It's not gonna make you a really good golfer because that's the farthest thing in the world from actually playing golf. Exactly right. Now, we're fortunate to work with a lot of tour players and when they come in and work with us, they're gonna hit, so a typical lesson would be the guy maybe comes in and thinks it's his job in the lesson to get all these balls from here out there somewhere, right? Oh, yeah, and accomplish it sometimes. And it'll accomplish it. And when we have work with our pros, it'll be basically one or two balls, marinate on whatever they're doing. They might go sit down and think about they it. They will sit down and think about it, talk about it, get back up, try to feel it, another couple balls. It's like night and day the difference in how they go about incorporating change into their swings. And it's one of those things that pros do that the average amateur can absolutely copy and get better at by doing. So one of the practice routines that we get from some of our players, and it's a really cool idea, is to actually have like a pitch count or a ball count. So let's say we're working on your plane, all right? And you're gonna have one swing thought in mind, okay? okay? Whatever that is, whatever we're working on, I'm gonna give you three balls. Okay. And I want you to really focus on the mechanics of what you're trying to do. Okay. All right, so let's fire this one off, thinking about the mechanics of what you're trying to do. Okay, so, you know, I, for, for myself, I tend to get the club maybe a little bit to this one. Okay, way. that's so what I want I'm, you to focus on in this swing. I'm gonna focus on doing this a couple times before I take the club away, just to feel it. Yep. And then I'm gonna maybe hit one kind of slow, but feeling that only. Okay. Okay. Good. All right, so typically we'll have some sort of a feedback device, so you can be focusing on it and we'll get the feedback for it. Okay. So I would have you hit these three balls with okay. that in mind, nothing else. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna give you a ball and I want you to make a golf swing as athletically as possible, trying to feel those same changes. So you're not really focused on the mechanics, you're just trying to incorporate what you just did. Beautiful. Okay. So now we've got three really good swings sort of a block practice and one kind of a golf swing natural. You'll okay. go through the process of picking your target and all that. So we're, we're practicing with three really focused swings to one natural swing. Okay. And then we'll do several reps of that, maybe eight reps of that. So we're really over indexing things with the eye towards improvement. Okay. Okay, then next we'll go two balls. All right, what's the swing thought again? I like to get the, the club a little more laid back here. I tend to stand it up and then it flops laid okay, off. Okay, let's so. see that. I want to go more there. And with these it. can be slow, yeah. right? Preferably slow. I actually might hit some like this. Good. All right, so we'll hit these two balls now. And then we'll come in and we'll try to reproduce that feel. Okay. Let's see you pick your target. Okay. All right. So now we're incorporating the golf course into our practice. So I'm going to try to feel that a little bit more. Yep, just to feel. Good. Really good. All right, so now we're down to two to one. And then we'll do maybe eight reps of that. And then we'll drop it down to one to one. And then we'll see where the change has occurred and how much of that we need to keep reproducing. But it's an idea of the focus needs to be such that we're just not trying to move this ball, this pile of balls out there. We're trying to really pick what we're working on, not, not five things at one time. Yeah. And, and all right, let's say we do all this, it's feeling better. Now let's pick another. What's another swing fall for you? Um, man, I tend to get my grip really weak with both hands. Okay, let's work on a grip. We're going to do the same thing with a grip. So, there's a drill that I will go through normally to get it right that I don't always do, which is probably half the problem. Okay. I'd like to get my finger on the side of the shaft. Like and it. Then here. So, so I might just do, hit an easy one like that. Yep, these are going to be three practices. Good. 
Okay. We've hit our three practice balls, and we're going to repeat the entire process. Three to one, several reps. Two to one, several reps. One to one. So, Mike, would you say that when I'm working strictly on the technique of it, not mm -hmm. like the game shot you told sure. me, should I be super worried about where the ball is going yet? You absolutely should not. This is practice, right? We've got to allow ourselves room to make mistakes, room for improvement. Hold on a second. We've got a train coming through. One of the perks of uh, golf academy got a train rolling through. Okay, Mike, so the question I have, and, I, and I, I see this a lot during my lessons, how focused should I be on the flight of the ball when I'm strictly just working on technique and gaining the initial feel for the new movement? Should yeah, I be so real concerned about it? No, we're, our focus is right here in our movement. So we want to focus on incorporating a change, right? When we're changing a motor pattern, it's not going to be pretty. No. Uh, it's just not going to be pretty. You've got to allow yourself or disassociate yourself with what the ball is doing just for this. That's why I like doing three to one, two to one, keep going back and forth, but you're 100% right. This is not time to focus on or get upset or emotional about the shot not coming off how you envision it, because again, we're trying to change a motor pattern and that's what the focus is for what we just did. And you have to give yourself time you know, the club, if you actually are successful in putting the club in a different spot somewhere in the backswing or downswing, mm -hmm. you have to give your brain time to sort out the release and to find Absolutely. the club, club face again. Absolutely. So let, let's say that you know, you've gone from being kind of an out to in player to a little more on plane. Well, that's a totally different release action. You have to give yourself time for your brain to sort that out and say, okay, I used to be this way. Now I've got to let the club head release a little differently in order to put the sweet spot on the ball. And that takes repetition. Yeah, just visually, you're, you're eye is now going to see the club coming from a completely different spot, different spot and it give it time to take hold absolutely and, and you'll start finding the club face again if you have some feedback a great teacher like mike or using your iphone mm -hmm. get some feedback on what you're doing and the things that you're working on and if you see that you're doing them correctly but you're still not liking the ball flight stick it out because i think you'll find that once your brain kind of reorganizes where impact is start hitting the middle of the face again now you're back in business. Stick it out and slow it down. And slow it down. Yep. All right, so that's our block practice. That's our mechanical practice. Now, if we're starting to make some gains, or when we're starting to make gains on that mechanical practice, now we can start to shift into where the ball's going. Right. And it's not uncommon to do this inside the same practice session. So let's say you got an hour to practice, maybe do that first 30 minutes of this block practice. Mm -hmm. Now let's start to actually play some golf shots. So just like we were doing three to one before, now we're gonna do three to one the opposite direction. Okay. So we're gonna hit our shot. Okay. We got one ball. This is all mechanical thought here. You're all really mechanical. gonna focus in on that same feel. Okay, I'm gonna Making do, that same change. Okay, I'm gonna work on playing again because yep. I feel like I didn't quite get that. Okay. I was a little too here. So let me check that a couple of times. And I'm just gonna chip one out there kind of easy and slow. Good. Okay. All right, now we're gonna do our three balls. Our three to one now is reverse. Now these are all, we're gonna stand back, go through our routine, we're gonna pick our target, mm -hmm. and we're just gonna try to have the feel of that motion you just made. How do you feel about picking a new target on these? I love time? it. Okay. Love it. We want variety with this. That's the I'm gonna go through my pre shot routine. That's the routine. key here. Good. Different target, completely different alignments and all that, but the same feel. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to change targets I'm going again. go across the range this time. Okay. And what you might find, I see this a lot, and I don't know if Mike has, you're going to find one side of the range or other is going to be more difficult to It's going to, to be more difficult. To. Absolutely correct. We see that on tour all the time. One side of the range, you're going to feel awkward aligning to, so that's something you can put alignment sticks down yes. during a practice session, but get used to which side you struggle with and understand your own game. Still right. feeling it, right? Yeah, I'm still feeling that motion there, but I'm gonna to try to make a normal pass at it. Good. All right, now let's put this one right down the middle. Okay. So, routine. So we're shifting from mechanical focus, really body movement focus, now into the feel, to the fluidity, to the athletic motion of all this and trusting that it'll eventually show up if we and, do the reps. And what I have my players do a lot of times, I'll incorporate into their pre-shot routine something that they're working on. Absolutely, A lot it's of my juniors idea. tend to make a poor takeaway. I'll have them make a couple of little waggles yep. here outside the ball to feel it. 
Now I'm trying to turn the brain off a little. I still am gonna pass through that spot, but I'm trying to feel more athletic with it. And hit a shot out there. Love it, really solid. Something like that. So I don't think it's a great idea to try to think no thought. No, that, that doesn't think work. Think no thought. I don't think that really I don't think works. it works either. We've got to really be in control of what we think, right? Mm -hmm. So the first half of this practice was all about the mechanical, trying to make a change. Now the second half, that thought shifts to the playing of that feel and putting it into practice. We're in control of what we think. It's not trying to eliminate thought. And, and something I want to bring up that I've heard other teacher, maybe one other teacher said, but I really like it. You want to give yourself something to do. You know, yes. everyone says, don't do this, don't do that, don't come over the top. It's much better to give yourself and your brain something to do. That's a more positive Absolutely. Uh, mindset, I would say. And also, when you, when you focus on something to do, I think it's a lot easier for your brain to get around that motion. Right. Instead, instead of, of not thinking, to do it. don't come over the top, give yourself the idea of I'm dropping it on plane and you'll see better results from it. And if you've got a golf teacher that says, don't do this, don't do that, and they're not telling you the what to do, you may want to find someone that can help you give you yeah. the what to do's. Yeah. Think positively, practice positively with really good intentions, and you will start to see the progression and the improvement that you put the time in on. Beautiful.